There's always been one question in Wings of Fire that has just never been answered, despite Tui giving some small hints but when we may possibly find out the truth. And that's the origin of Animus Magic. Where did it come from? How does it even exist? But you guys, I think I can give you an answer as to how the Tribes got Animus Magic and why it started with the Ice Wings. And believe it or not, there is a scientific and somewhat logical explanation. One of my friends, Time Seeker, shared this theory a while back, and it absolutely blew my mind. 100% of the credit goes to him on this one. But seeing it now, I can't believe nobody has thought of this before. And yes, emphasis on the word theory here. This is just speculation and has not been confirmed. Take with a grain of salt until we can get some confirmation from the writer. But I am pretty confident in this, and it explains a lot about Wings of Fire that we only thought we knew. Before we begin, a huge shout out to my patrons, Chris Roblox Man, Dark Lover 95, and Three Moons. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Link to their social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Only four tribes been confirmed to have Animai. The Ice Wings, the Sea Wings, the Sky Wings, and the Sand Wings, the only named of which being the Jerboas. The Ice Wings are the first known tribe to possess Animus magic, with the Sea Wings finally getting it a little before Darkstalker's time, and the Sand Wings getting their first named Animus during Darkstalker's time. Keeping this in mind, here's the theory. The special abilities of each tribe have been shown to be connected to celestial events. For example, empowered Nightwings gain their abilities by being hatched under one or more full moons. But here's the thing. Moons don't shine with their own light. It's reflected from the system's star. What if in this case, the first Animus Dragon gained their power from the sun or some other related event? The first known Animus Dragon was an Icewing. The reason the Icewings may have gotten their Animus magic first is because they live in the far north, therefore giving them the highest chance of seeing an aurora. What's more, auroras are formed when a planet's magnetic field concentrates intense solar radiation, and that radiation causes air to react to produce light. The radiation emitted from auroras isn't deadly or symptom-causing. Instead, it's electromagnetic radiation that transfers energy to electrons, therefore traveling to Earth. The electrons then collide with atoms and molecules, creating the wonderful natural light show which is an aurora. The radiation from the aurora would cause the Icewing's genes to mutate, allowing the animus trait to be passed down to successive generations. What if an aurora is what gives Icewings their power, since the moon's work gives the Nightwings theirs? There are all celestial events, and it would make sense. The reason the other tribes gain animus power later is because they live at lower latitudes, where seeing an aurora would be much rarer. The Skywings live in the same latitude of the map as Icewings, so maybe asking why they don't have animi, and it's a good question. However, this is because of the barbaric practices of the Skywings towards removing empowered dragons, like how they kill fire scale dragonettes when they hatch. Skywings had animus magic before Darkstalker's time, but were killed the moment they realized they had abilities due to the fear of danger of the unknown. I can totally picture there being old Skywing legends about dragonettes being born with such animus abilities, though having been forgotten and lost to time over the years. And regarding fire scales, I think I can also provide an answer as to why they have their powers. And no, it's not just because one twin sucked the fire out of the other. The Skywings live in the mountains, and it's possible that fire skill dragonettes are born due to exposure to intense sunlight, likely during the summer solstice. All three of these ways of gaining abilities are based on celestial events, and they're connected to the characteristics and living places of the tribes. The Nightwings have a connection to the moons, the Icewings may have a connection to auroras, and the Skywings may have a connection to the summer solstice, where Earth's poles have its maximum tilt toward the sun, therefore creating the most light. As for the Seamings and the Sandwings, their animus abilities can also be explained, though not necessarily by any celestial events I can think of. We know the tribes all originated from the same dragons who created their own tribes over time, so it's possible that some of these traits may begin genetically. Maybe the Sandwings have a very faint connection to the moons, seeing as they seemingly worship them. Perhaps that faint connection is what created a few Sandwing anima in the past, and that's why they're incredibly rare. The gene is dying out, with the Sandwing anima who do have it not reproducing naturally, like Jerboa. The Icewings live the closest to where Auroras are found, and Animai were carefully bred into the royal family. Other tribes didn't do the same in maintaining their Animus dragons, besides the Sea Wings. And as for the Sea Wings, we know that Albatross is not a sea ice hybrid, and this was confirmed by Tui. His skills are just on the lighter pigmentation scale for the tribe. 
He was the first seeming animus, so you'd think it'd be pretty weird that they just popped out of nowhere, especially if he isn't a hybrid. This one I can't come with a definitive answer to, but it could always relate to the tribe ancestors. Still, it would be kind of weird that the seeming animus gene that somehow accidentally got into the royal family would come back after a couple thousand years. It ultimately leads me to believe Albatross got his powers from a celestial event, maybe even an aurora, with those genes being affected by the radiation due to some very, very faint part icewing genetics from back before there were tribes. Again, this doesn't make total sense unless the gene was really bred back in the royal family after, Animai only marrying Animai for a very long time to strengthen it. We may say, Okay, but this doesn't make sense. The Ice Wings lost their animus magic and never got it back. How could they get it from Auroras? And here's my answer. They can't. Not anymore. When asked about the origin of animus magic, Tui said that it was a scorching-based question. Animus magic originated sometime before, during, or soon after the scorching, which is maybe when Aurora were more common with the different environment. It made Pyra somewhat warmed after the scorching, and it became increasingly more rare for dragonets to be born with such abilities unless they were specifically genetic. And this would make sense. The Ice Wings figured out who their animi were and carefully bred them into the royal family very early on. We never heard of commoners getting animus magic, and this was likely because they couldn't anymore. So either A, auroras happened less frequently after the scorching, or didn't emit the same or enough radiation with the changed climate as Pyra warmed, or B, the tribes changed so much over time that all the regular genes couldn't be affected by such celestial events, unless they were already in their genetics somewhere deep, except for the Nightwings, where genetics aren't a factor. Once the tribes began to form, living conditions and environments could have changed as they found new places to live. And so, after a while, the only ice wings left with Animus Magic were those whose genes were radiated at birth, after a long time passed a week in auroras with not enough radiation to affect genetics in such a way. Those with genes unique enough to absorb that power were only being bred into the royal family. This theory has some holes, but it's the most thorough one I've seen so far. Animus magic is a huge mystery, but I really think the incorporation of celestial events being involved in giving dragons powers would be a very cool concept. After all, we already know what happens with the Nightwings. They get their powers from the moons, and it's possible the genetic explanation for animus magic could be because the Ice Wings got their animus magic through auroras before, during, or soon after the scorching, and sky and fire skills are made possible by being born at the time of summer solstice. Maybe instead of one twin sucking the fire out of the other for seemingly no reason, it could be because the light of the summer solstice shines bright on one part of the egg, and very dimly on the other. Because of this, the extreme light would have a celestial effect and cause one dragonet to get all the fire, and for the other, with less light shining on them, to get none. By the way, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you guys think about this theory? I've honestly got to give a massive shout out to Time Seeker for coming up with this one. I think it's entirely plausible. And as for the things that are harder to be explained, they can easily just be answered with this simple thing. It's fantasy. There's no logical reason the Nightwings get powers from their moons, and yet it's just accepted. Not everything needs some crazy and 100% believable answer. Simply just the fact that it's fiction explains a lot. But regardless, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.